Hey everyone, my name is Riley and in this video we will be comparing Zoho Books to QuickBooks. I will go into detail with the pricing, the features of both of these tools, the differences, the pros and cons, and everything that you need to know to make a decision on which of these accounting softwares is going to be best for you. I will leave my affiliate links for both of these tools in the description of this video and if you sign up to either of these tools using those links, then if you sign up to a plan or you sign up to the free trial and later down the line upgrade, I will earn a small commission at no extra cost to you. So if you do get value from this video, then I ask that you use one of those links. If you don't get any value, then just go straight to the website. Now, the first major difference between these tools and this doesn't sound important at first, but I will explain why this is so important. QuickBooks has a huge market share, by far the most popular accounting software whereas Zoho Books is tiny. If I pull up the actual statistics for this, we can see that QuickBooks has an 85% market share over the accountancy software market, whereas Zoho Books has 0.49. So we can see a major difference in that QuickBooks almost has like a monopoly over the accountancy market. Almost every accountant knows how to use this. Whereas Zoho Books, not many accountants do. The reason that this is so important is because if you are planning on delegating your accounting or hiring an accountant at any point in your business, well, if you go with Zoho Books, it's a good possibility that you will end up in this kind of strange place where you have to decide between I either have to train this accountant up or ask him to learn how to use this software so that he can do my finances. Or we can basically transfer all of the data that we have in Zoho Books and transfer that over to QuickBooks. And that is not going to be very fun at all. That's going to be very messy and stressful. So that is the first thing to point out. Now, the second thing in here, the second thing to notice is the massive price difference between these two tools. Right now, QuickBooks has this offer where you can get 50% off for the first three months or you can try it free for the first 30 days. And this is the pricing right here. Whereas Zoho Books, you can sign up to a free trial. I think this is a 14 day free trial. And if we just flick these both over to monthly, this is the pricing right here for Zoho. So we can start out with a free account right here where you can do this all for free if you have an annual revenue of under 50k. And then from there, we go to standard, which is $20 per month, $50 per month and $70 per month. And uh, yeah, this is a lot cheaper than QuickBooks. So straight off the bat, I would say if you do under 50k in revenue, I wouldn't really worry too much about how it's going to be hiring an accountant later down the line, or if I eventually have to hire a team to do all of my accounting and my taxes, cross that bridge when you come to it. Honestly, under 50k per year, I wouldn't worry about any of this. I would just focus on cutting costs in the business as much as possible. So the fact that Zoho Books have this free trial, that is just what I would use if I fall into this category. However, don't click off yet because if you do fall into this category, there are a few more things that you need to know. And there might actually be a reason that you decide that you specifically need to upgrade. Now to go more into the pricing and break down why I actually think this is, I don't think the bigger pricing on QuickBooks actually comes from having more features where Zoho Books has less. I don't think this is the reason because honestly, the features of these two tools aren't majorly different. Definitely not enough to warrant this price difference. I think the main reason that Zoho Books are able to be so cheap is because Zoho Books is not the only thing that they offer. Zoho have software in so many different areas. They have a CRM, they have a form software, they have an email marketing software, they have a webinar software. And if I just go down, you can see all of these different tools that they have. So with each of these tools, because they have so many in so many different industries, they can afford to lower the cost of each one and still make a lot of profit. Whereas QuickBooks essentially has QuickBooks and then we do have an additional payroll software that we can add on. So on that topic, I would say with Zoho, be careful because you will get sucked into the ecosystem. It's kind of like when you buy an Apple product for the first time and you think, okay, I'm just going to buy this iPhone. And then before you know it, every time you need to upgrade a piece of tech, you go to Apple because it fits the ecosystem. 
the same thing is going to happen here with Zoho, where you buy Zoho books, then you might need Zoho inventory, you might need Zoho payroll, then you need a CRM, so why not go with Zoho? And <laughs> they will suck you in and get you trapped in this ecosystem, which is not necessarily a bad thing. Like all of the tools right here, they are cheaper. So as an example with the CRM, there are better CRMs out there. HubSpot is a lot better. Uh, Salesforce is a lot better. But Zoho is cheap and simple. So that is essentially what you are looking for. If you go with any of these Zoho tools, just it's cheap and simple. That is what Zoho does. Continuing on this path, and this is something else that you need to watch out for. If you do payroll and if you need an inventory tracking system with Zoho books, you also need to buy the additional software to add on to it. As an example, if I am with Zoho books and I need to run employee payroll, well, I can't just do it on one of these plans right here. I need to get Zoho payroll, which is another software. And if we go to the pricing right here, this is what you will be paying for payroll. So we pay $19 and then an additional $3 for every employee on top of this. So that is payroll right there. And you need to integrate these to get the full payroll experience. And there is actually one downside to this. And that is, this is a major downside. Zoho payroll is only in like 24 states. If you're in most states, like you won't be able to access this. Now, this is data as of the 4th of September, 2024. They are constantly adding new states. So what I would recommend is if you are thinking of going with Zoho and you need payroll, I, I will leave a link to this in the description. I just check this out and just make sure that the state that you are in actually supports Zoho payroll. Otherwise, that's not going to be very nice. You buy the software, set everything up, go to do payroll and then realize that you can't. That would not be a very nice experience. A second thing that you need to add on to Zoho Books is inventory, if you need to track inventory. So once again, we can search for Zoho inventory right here. And if we go to the pricing, you can see that they have another pricing structure right here. And it can get pretty expensive depending on, you know, how many orders you are doing per month, how many warehouses you have. So that is an additional add-on right there. In terms of QuickBooks, they have these features, but they are just available with these more expensive plans. So if I go in here and I look for inventory, uh, you can see it right here. So inventory is available with the plus plan right here. And I should also mention that just because Zoho inventory is a separate software, you might think that, oh, they have an entire software dedicated to this. Therefore, it must be better. It must be more advanced. Not really. Like they both do the same functionalities. You can track orders. You can track your inventory. Everything that you need to do inside of an inventory software, you can do with both of these tools. In terms of payroll, uh, this is actually an add-on. It's just not a separate software. So we would choose one of these plans on QuickBook. Let's say we went for this plan right here. And then you can see we have three different payroll plans to choose from, ranging from $50 to $130 per month. Uh, this, this is another thing. I don't know how helpful this would be or if this would actually be used, but this is a difference I want to mention. If I pull up the app store right here, Zoho Books has an app. So this is on my Mac, of course, but if I also go over here, they have an app that you can go ahead and download. Now, I'm not sure how helpful this would be. It's not something I have personally used. I just don't find the idea of doing my accounting on my phone very appealing. But maybe if you are on the go, you need to pull up some company reports in a business meeting or something like this. It might be very handy to have. QuickBooks don't have this. They don't have any kind of app. You can just use this on the web. Now, another major thing that I should mention, and I need to log into both of these tools to show you. Once again, this is a pro and a con, depending on your personal use case and if you already have Stripe. Zoho Books doesn't have an integrated payment gateway. So with QuickBooks, they do. So if I go over here and as an example, I go to create an invoice, I can just create an invoice right here enter in all of the information. So like the customer, the service, how much it cost, everything like that. And we can see at the top, we can accept all of these cards automatically. And I don't have to go in there and set up like a Stripe account and all of these different payment gateways. I can connect up PayPal to add an additional payment option, but all of these are automatically accepted. So what this means is if I now go in here and I grab the invoice link, Let's just copy this and open this up. People can pay straight through the QuickBooks software. They can load in, they can pay through, 
and this will be added to my QuickBooks account. With Zoho Books, you can accept payments through links just like that, through emails that you send, through invoices that you send, you can collect payments. You need to set this up and integrate this with a payment gateway like Stripe. So if you already have a Stripe account, this is probably the best idea. So once again, if I head over to the invoices here on Zoho, you can see configure a payment gateway. So I would just go in here and these are the payment gateways that we can set up. To accept credit and debit card, we need to set up Stripe. So technically, although this is a con, if you used Stripe already, massive pro. Uh, then down here we have like PayPal. We have these three options that QuickBooks don't allow you to accept, but I really don't know many businesses outside of B2C. Like if you're a B2B business, nobody sends invoices and expects them to get paid through Klarna. It's like B2C, direct customer, they're on your website, they want something, they buy through Klarna. So all of these are, in my opinion, really not very, like nobody uses them, but they are there if you want to. Now, this is something that in my opinion is a little bit sneaky from Zoho Books. And this is, if we go to Zoho Books right here, they claim, if we scroll down here, I just need to find it, they essentially claim on any of these plans that you can auto scan receipts. So what this means is any receipts that you get given, you can just lay them down, scan them into the app, and then it's going to take the data, stop you from entering all the data in from every receipt that you get. Although this is technically true, they limit you in how many you can scan. If we look into this, you only get 50 per month, right? And then you need to go down and purchase this for an additional $8 per month. Although this is technically free, you do need to purchase that add-on. Whereas with QuickBooks right here, I think this is with any of these plans, uh, just to look, receipt catcher right here, they don't have a limit on this. You can scan as many as you need on any of these plans. So those are the main differences that you need to know about. In terms of the fundamentals of an accountancy software, such as creating invoices, tracking expenses, tracking bills, making sure things are paid, tracking your company financials, both of these tools do a fantastic job of this. And although the user interface is different, there's no really comparable difference between them. They're they both do it, they both do it excellently. So it's just these major differences that you need to be aware of. My personal opinion is that it really depends on your business size. If you are a smaller business and the 10 to $20 per month difference is really something that you want to cut back on, then definitely go with Zoho Books. However, the fact that most accountants use QuickBooks and it is kind of like the gold standard in the accountancy space, I would personally go for QuickBooks. That is the accountancy software that I use. And that is mainly the reason why more people use it. Either way, if you did find this video valuable, all I ask is that you use the links in the description when you sign up and that gives back to the channel. And yeah, that is the difference between QuickBooks and Zoho Books.